Hey everybody and welcome back to another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do studio lighting and how you can render your scenes in 3ds Max using V-Ray. Um, this is going to be basically on how to render a single object like we have here, just one single stool chair. So if you just want to render one object in a studio scenario, this is going to be what you're going to want to watch and learn how to do. So I'll be going over the placement, how to create the backdrop, the camera, the lighting. So let's jump right into it. Uh, the chair here, you may recognize because they're everywhere. You see them in uh, Tropical Smoothie, um, basically any restaurant <laughs> ever, they all use the chair. Um, I made it for a company, so yeah, we'll be using this. So to start, get your object, put it right dab in the middle of your scene, and then we're going to go over to our geometry and grab a plane. Uh, you can just go ahead and make it about the size of a square. Okay, go back to our perspective. I want to hit F4. That way you can bring up your grid line. And hit G to get rid of that grid in the middle. So G gets rid of that. So from here, we're going to go ahead and uh, get rid of... Not those ones. We want to keep those. Get rid of the width. So it's just like this. And then we're going to go ahead and right-click Convert to edible poly now before we go any further let's go ahead and make sure that we're in v-ray so make sure you go to renderer v-ray whatever version you have i have 3.40 and make sure you have that clicked next i'm just gonna push m to go to my materials and i'm gonna throw a standard v-ray material over everything there we go everything has a standard material and now let's continue on we're gonna go ahead and get rid of these two lines here just hold control and hit backspace and it'll get rid of those. And it won't leave any verts anywhere. So, okay. Now that we have that, let's move this one in a little bit and uh, just grab this line right here and go to your left view. From there, we're gonna hold shift and we're just gonna kinda create this wave looking effect. So, something just like so. Now you can see we have that little wave. Next, let's go ahead, you go into your verts, and you grab all of them, and then push R. That way you get your uh, like re uh, scaling thing. You can just come in and move it left and right, and you can make these larger and smaller. Let's go ahead and uh, make that a little bit larger, so that way we can't see off the sides. And then switch over to your edge mode. And if you're wondering how I'm switching between all these, it's just one, two, three, four, five. And you can switch between those. So I hit two, come over to this, and I'm gonna pull this out just a little bit, just so we don't see down there either. Next, we're gonna go ahead and do a turbo smooth. And we'll do that twice, because I'm not really too worried about uh, my polygons. But this is a little bit weird, so I actually kinda wanna pull this out some. I'm gonna pull this so it's about there. And something like that, just so it is a little bit more natural. Perfect. Next, I'm going to grab my object, push P to be in your perspective, hit Z, that way you zoom in on it. And we're going to get just a nice frontal view about right here, and hit Control C to create a camera. Now, if you want to know what camera that is, it is a physical camera. So I like to have my camera in the middle of my scene. And then I like to move my object the way I want it for that scene. So I'm gonna take this and just do a little turn on it to give it some you know, nice perspective. So next, we're gonna go back to our camera. So come out in perspective mode and click on your camera. Once you are in your camera, we're going to mess with our settings here. You want to have a specify POV or FOV, not POV, uh, FOV off. And I like to have a 55 millimeter, because that's about, 55 is similar to real life. So I have that. Um, I have my shutter speed set to one slash seconds. And about 120, you'll be adjusting this when you put the lights in. And then make sure you have exposure control installed, and then set your manual ISO to 100. Once you have all those, hit C to go back to your camera. And make sure you have yeah, about this is pretty good. So now we want to make sure that we see what our actual uh, 
render is going to look like. So if you come over to your common and you have your output size here, if you hit shift, if you're like in this mode here, not on here, you hit shift F, it will bring up your render. This is what your render will look like when you hit shift F. So you do that and this is what it's going to look like. Actually, now that I see that, I actually want to go back to my camera and I want to zoom in just a little bit, probably about right there. And I can move it to the right just a little bit. So this is how I want mine to look. And those settings is 1920 by 1440. I like a little bit more square look since there's not too much on either side. So now that I've done that, we're gonna move on to our lights. There's no point in doing a sample render yet because we don't have any lights in the scene. So come over to your lights and make sure you're in V-Ray lights and then click on V-Ray light. So we're gonna go top down. The first light is gonna be about the size of your object approximately, somewhere around there. Push P to go into your perspective. And then just go ahead and bring that light up to about that much higher. Hit T to go back to your top mode, bring it back. And then we're going to end up rotating it uh, here we go. This direction about 40 to 45 degrees. Next, we're going to rotate it this direction about another 45 degrees. So there's going to be three lights total in our scene. So once we have that, we can move it over to this side of our object. This is going to be our main light and give us the majority of our lighting. So some things that we're going to edit in this really quick. You can leave the multiplier at 30. Cast shadow on. You just want to make sure that it is invisible. That way you can't see it in your camera. Next, we're going to copy this one over. Make sure you do copy, not instance, because otherwise it will mess with this camera. And then we're going to rotate this 90 degrees. So that way it's perfectly on the other side. And this one we're actually going to move back a little bit further. Because this is going to be a secondary light. This is just going to fill in some of those dark shadows on this side from what this light is causing. So let's go ahead and uh, we also want to rotate this up a little bit now. So make sure that you have your view on local. Well, in your rotation, you want it on local. That way you can spin this up just a little bit so that way it points more directly at your, uh, your chair or whatever it is that you are doing. So now that we have that about that angle, we want to take the multiplier and drop it down to 15. So it's going to be half of what this light is. So now we're going to create one more. So I'll hit T to go to your top view and put this back to your view mode. And we're going to drag this one behind. Now there's two different spots that you can use the behind one at. And it all depends on your object and how you want your scene to look. So for now, we will go ahead and uh, just do the standard one. You want it straight across from your secondary light. You want to rotate it 180 degrees. So now we're going to put it about the same distance as this one. If we hit P, this one is actually going to come down a little bit and we're going to rotate this one just up some. So it's going to be a little bit lower, about right there. And uh, yeah, perfect. And uh, we'll leave that at about 15 for the moment. And you also want to make sure that one is invisible as well. So if we go back to our camera now, um, we can do a quick render. Oh, I was messing with this before. I always like to make sure that my stuff looks good before I actually go into and do my renders. So you can see we're getting um, a nice little studio render scene here. We're getting our shadows and everything, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, I'm going to cancel this now for the moment, and I'm going to make our render size smaller. That way, you can um, it renders faster, obviously. So we're going to go ahead and mess with the settings now. So the settings we're going to mess with is your image sampler first. Uh, if you're just doing a sample render, keep it on progressive. And if you're doing a full render, you're going to want it on bucket. So for the full render, I like to do min subs of 3 and max of 16 and noise threshold of 002. Now if your uh, machine isn't as powerful and you want to render a little bit quicker, you can make this 0 0.005. And if you want a little bit longer, better settings, do 0 0.001. But I like to do about 0.02. Um, we're going to close this now. 
go to your global DMC, make sure that you're in advanced mode, and you want your noise threshold here to be the same as it is right here. So whatever this one is, make sure this one is the same. So now that we have that, we can then come over to our GI. I like to use brute force and light cache. Brute force, I uh, can't mess with. I don't know why, I've never messed with it. It just leaves the way it is anyways. And then my light cache, I like to put it at about 2000. Uh, so whatever size this is, so if you're gonna be rendering a 1920, you probably want this about 2000. And then your sample size, you want 0 0.001 for the best quality. And you can always do 0 0.005 if your machine is not as strong, but I like to do 0 0.001. Also, just a quick note, never hit tab from here to move over to the sample size because it will crash 3ds Max for whatever reason. So never tab between these. I don't know why, but it always crashes Max. Maybe it's just me. Um, actually, I want to increase this really quick. This is uh, your RAM. I have 16 gigs RAM, so I put this at about 12,000. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a render now that we have all this set up. You can see we get a nice studio render here. So this is giving us a nice, uh, again, a lot of uh, light over on this side, a little bit less over here. And because of that light in the background, we're getting a nice little glow around the edge of our object. Uh, I do have it on bucket right now, so it's going to render everything. There we go. I'll just quickly go through. And uh, I'll also show you this with a material applied to it, so that way you can get an idea of that as well. Yeah, this is a really nice, just simple setup. You can even go ahead and once you create the sample scene, like the studio scene, you can even go ahead and save it and use it for future renders, which is what I do. I have one that I use for all my renders. So this turned out really nice. I didn't even have to mess with this too much. Now, some of the things that you will have to mess with, of course, will be your lighting position, but mostly your camera. Because if we were to come in here now, and let's say I had this at like 200, this is gonna produce a darker scene now. Whereas if I had this at, let's say 50, it's going to produce a much brighter scene. So this is what you're going to mess with here to affect how bright or how dim your scene is. And uh, yeah, let's just put this back at 120. I also have my aperture at 2.8 but I'm not using my depth of field, so it's not really that much of an issue. So that's how we uh, create that for just a standard material. Now, let's say I applied something glossy to this because these chairs are usually glossy. They have some kind of paint or plastic over it. So I'm just gonna go ahead, uh, wait for this to load, there we go. I'm gonna grab all the parts that I want my paint on. And I'm just going to apply this Ferrari car paint that I got from V-Ray uh, Materials. And then I have a couple little plastic pieces that I'm just going to go ahead and put on the plastic parts out there. There. Perfect. So we go back to our render now. We can see how this is going to look. Uh, this is where you're going to start messing with the lights because I don't like this giant blob right here. And the way I combat that is by having a different lighting scene. So this backlight is what's causing that. And what we're going to do with this backlight is something a little bit different. So we want to first um, make sure you're in local so that way you can adjust this back to the way it originally was. So straight up and down and then like this. So now we're, we have this flat background uh, looking light. And I'm gonna want this to be way bigger. So I'm gonna put this about 40 by 40. This is gonna be different for everybody, but this is just what fits my scene. And then I'm gonna move this back about to right there. Seems good. And I'm not gonna want this at 15 now because it's really large. I'm gonna put it at about five. So when I go back to my camera now uh, and I render this, you can see I'm getting this really nice luring light all the way around my chair. Okay, here we go for this yeah so i'm getting this really nice little outer glow light all the way around my chair and that looks super nice this is a really nice render just to show off a simple now we are getting this line all the way across because uh there's not really light back here this is 
I guess if we move this up a little bit, you might be able to combat that. So let me see how this works. Yeah, that helps it a little bit. So if you need to uh, fix this and make it so that way it's not so sharp, go ahead and move the light up a little bit so it's not sitting straight on the ground. But yeah, this looks really nice. So I hope you guys learned a lot from this video and this was really helpful. I know you guys really appreciate the uh, the lighting tutorials and lighting is something that I really enjoy doing. And every time I try to find a good studio setup render on YouTube, I can never find a really nice one. And this is just really simple. It's a three light setup and it will give you nice uh, studio renders for just showing off uh, work in progress or for studio render. So you have your main light, your secondary light, and then your backlight that's going to give you a nice little edge glow around your object. So I hope this was useful, you guys. I really appreciate all the support on the channel. And I can't wait to see you guys in the next video. Please leave any comments or anything else you need to ask me in the comments below. And always, as always, I will get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you for watching. Peace out.